Okay, so now with some introduction, we'll start to talk about uh, um, how to build your first OR model and how to solve those OR, OR models graphically. Okay. Um, the characteristics of all optimization models include the three main components, which is the decisions, um, say how many products to make, how many to buy, uh, which, way, which way to go, these are all decisions. Okay, and the objective, um, maximize the total profit, minimize the total cost, uh, minimize total time used, um, minimize the total um, distance, these are all kind of objectives. And there are also constraints. Um, because we're dealing with the scarce resources. So constraints would be, okay, we only have, say, like 10 minutes um, to go from A to B. Um, or we only have uh, uh, 1,000 labor hours uh, to produce those products. Uh, we only have um, um, 10 square feet um, to put those furniture. Okay, so these are all constraints that we need to use, uh, formulate. And when we translate the, these three components into an OR mo model um, that in means you put get this okay um, the decision variables okay so this represents the decision part um, usually we'll have a different set of decision variables but here we we'll only have like x one two okay and for every OR model please make sure you define what your decision variables represent. Okay, so means, okay, X1 means uh, the number of product one to produce. Okay, and uh, the second part would be the objective. So objective will be written in a way that uh, either it's maximize or minimize an objective function. So this is objective function, and you can see the objective function is a function of your decision variables. Um, as we mentioned that, uh, all the models that we talk about in this class, they are descriptive, which means we can always uh, write the function in a closed format of the relationship of that uh, decision variables, those independent decision variables. For example, here, maybe we're saying maximize the total profit. Then this uh, function would be, um, say, okay, a unit profit of x1 times x1, which is uh, how many units of product one to produce plus you need the profit of x2 times x2. That means the total profit you get from um, the second product and so on. Okay, so here is a function of the decision variables. Then subject to the constraints. The constraints would also be some functions of the decision variables less than equal to, greater than equal to, or equal to a certain value. Okay, and uh, if uh, all those functions, so the f0 all the way to fm, if all those functions are linear, then our model is a linear programming model. Okay, and why we want to differentiate that is because uh, the algorithm used to solve LP models, linear programming models, and uh, ILP models and nonlinear programming, they are different. Okay, um, when we use computer softwares, uh, the one thing we do is we check different algorithms to use when we solve those different types of problems. Um, but uh, fundamentally, there are much difference because uh, linear programming models, we are sure to find the optimal solution. But uh, nonlinear programming models, we we're not able to find the absolute optimization uh, solution. Okay, so whenever it's uh, possible to model a problem into a linear programming model, or many times we use linear integer programming model. We're going to formula for formulate them in linear format. Okay, and the linear format means they are in this format. Okay, all the ABCs here represent numerical values. So it only includes uh, um, plus minus. Okay, so if say it's uh, if any any of here function say x1 times x2, then that's a nonlinear objective function. Then um, we would need to use a different uh, um, algorithm to solve it. Same here. Say if it's say, okay, x1 squared, or say x2 minus x3, these will make the model nonlinear. Okay. But we here we're talking about linear program models first. Um, let's look at our first problem. Okay, we'll formulate this problem and we'll try to solve it. Um, the problem goes this. 
The Blue Ridge Hot Hub uh, Company produces two types of hot tubs, the Equals Bus and the Hydroluxes. Equals Bus use, uh, to, to build one Equals Bus um, model, it uses one pump, okay? Requires nine hours of uh, labor and also requires 12 feet of tubing. And each unit of Equals Bus Hot Tub gives uh, $350 of uh, profit. Um, and the second model, the Hydroluxes, to build each Hydroluxes uh, hot tub, you need to use one pump, six hours of labor, 16 feet of tubing, and it gives you $300 of uh, profit. So currently, this Blue Ridge hot tub company has uh, 200 pumps, 1,566 hours of labor, and uh, 2,880 feet of tubing available. So that's the problem, okay. So let's think about what are trying to decide. <coughs> so remember, we said every OR problem, there are three components. First component is the decision. So what, what is this company trying to decide? What's that? Okay, how many of each to produce, right? Okay, so that's our decision. How many of uh, equal spots should we produce and how many hydroluxes should we produce? Okay, then the second part would be, so that's our decision part. Okay, second part is objective. What's the objective of this problem? Well, think about what's the project, of, what's the object of every business? Maximize the profit, right? Okay, and in this case, the profit come from both models, okay? So we're going to maximize the total profit of uh, selling both models. Then the third part is the constraints. These are the limited resources, okay? And uh, we know that uh, to build each type of those uh, hot tub, um, certain unit of resources are needed. For example, we have 200 pumps. So we build, uh, if we just build all equal spots, how many can we build? Just looking at pump. Mm -hmm. We can only build 200, right? Because we only have 200 pumps, okay? Then labor is another constraint. Tubing is another constraint. Um, without looking at these two, we know that maximum we can build 200 of this. But if we look at the labor of hour and the tubing, we may not be able to build 200 even, okay? Because uh, the labor may be a constraint. So let's say 1566 six divided by nine, what's that? For sure it's less than 200, right? Okay, so that means, uh, what's that? 172.8, okay. So if, uh, since we only have this mu much labor, um, we, we can even build 200 equal spots. Then what about tubing? If we use 2880 divided by 12, that's more than 200 we can build, right? What's that? 240. 240, okay. So that means uh, if we use all the resources to build just the equal spots, we're going to build uh, this many equal spots, okay. And uh, that will leave us uh, a lot of um, surplus in the resources. Um, we will have um, about uh, um, 20, 27 um, pumps left and uh, have a lot of uh, tubing left, okay. And uh, so how, how do we make a decision that, okay, say, um, now we know that maybe we should not all just build equal spots, uh, even though it makes a lot of unit, uh, unit profit because we have a lot of resources left. Maybe we can build some hydroluxes with, uh, with the living resource. But uh, how to find that combination that gives us the best uh, um, profit? So we'll use the um, OR model to do that, okay? Um, so let's, uh, let's just work on this, uh, this, profit, this, this, this problem here, okay? So we'll say the um, let me go through the five steps first. First, uh, of course, we need to understand prevalent just like what we um, analyzed just now. And uh, identifying the decision variables, really think about, okay, what's the decision involved in this case? 
then define the decision variables. Okay, so that's that what I said. Make sure you specify what your decision variables represent. So x1 here represents uh, number of equals bars to produce. X2 here represents number of hydroluxes to produce. Um, I also emphasize this uh, first time. Um, make sure when you specify the decision variables, speci specify them very clearly. Um, I've had students in the past saying just put x1 equals to be uh, um, equals bus. x1 is equals bus. So you really need me to make it clear it's the number of equals bus to produce. Okay, it's not x1 equals to be beef, x2 equals to be um, pork. What does that mean? Okay, it's like uh, the pound of beef to produce, the pound of pork to produce. Okay, so make sure you specify really clearly because uh, um, many times um, a problem can be modeled in multiple ways. And if you don't specify your decision variables, it can be hard for me to understand what you are really doing. Okay, and uh, especially as engineering management uh, um, student, I expect you to communicate everything clearly. So uh, when people see your model, you need to be very clear. Okay, these are number of equals to produce, so the model is clear. Okay, and uh, then after we specify the decision variables, we'll need to state the objective function. And here, because we're talking about the linear programming, so the object function need to be a linear combination of the decision variables. So if we go back to this problem here, our we said the objective is to maximize the profit, total profit, okay? And uh, each number of, each unit of uh, equals bus makes $350. And each unit of hydroluxes makes 300 so if we are going to produce x1 unit of equals bus and x2 unit of hydroluxes, how many total profits do we make? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we use uh, x1 and x2 and this 350 and the 300, the write a function out, the total profit would be to maximize 350 times x1 plus 300 times x2. Okay, so this part represents uh, um, the total profit from producing both the models. Okay, at this point we don't know how many to produce for each, but uh, we represent uh, the number to produce for each using our decision variables. That's the x1 and the x2. Okay. Then we go back to the third thing, which is the constraints. So here we'll look at the pumps, okay. Um, let me see if I can wipe this. Oh, I cannot wipe them. Um, so let's just look at the first the resource, pump. To build each equal bus, we need one pump, same as uh, hydroluxes. And in total, there are 200 pumps, that means uh, the total um, number of uh, pumps used to produce both need to be not exceeding this 200, right? Okay, so we can just uh, write a constraint, write the left-hand side of constraint representing the total number of pumps to be used. Okay, so can someone else tell me how to write? The total, someone else. What's that? Shifa? Equal to? Or is it not, not exceeding? Okay. Let's say less than equal to 200. Okay. So that's uh, the left hand side is uh, the total amount of uh, pumps to be used, right? Should not exceed the total amount. Okay. And uh, then in a similar way, we can write uh, the second and the third constraints to represent, okay, the total amount of hours of labor should not exceed this 1566 here. And uh, the total amount of tubing to be used should not exceed this uh, 2850, uh, sorry, 2880 here. Okay, can someone else write the second constraint? So for the hours of um, labor. So that's the 9x1 plus, right? Plus this is 6x2 should not exceed what we have, 
one, five, six, six. Okay. Then the third one for the tubing would be the twelve times x one plus uh, this uh, sixteen here. X two should not exceed uh, this uh, two eight eighty here. Okay. So that's the third part <coughs> of our constraint. So constraint for pumps, labor, and tubing. Okay. And uh, here what um, we still need uh, one more constraint because uh, all of our disassembles, the x need to be greater than equal to zero. We cannot produce a, a negative number. Okay, so add this uh, upper or low lower bound, which x1, x2 greater than equal to zero. Okay, um, we call this uh, non negativity. non-negativity constraint. Um, make sure you add them um, for all your problems. Okay. Um, and in this problem, we don't, we're not going to add the integer constraints. Um, usually, like when you try to, when you produce a, a pump, you need to produce a complete one, right? Um, especially because that the profits, like the objective function here. Here, the profits is taking you only get the 350 when you sell it entire hot tub, right? So if you uh, say, okay, the X1 is 0.6, we don't get the 0.6 times 350 of a profit, right? So for this problem, like to get it complete, we would add another constraint, X1 and X2 need to be integers, okay? But uh, because the integer programming um, takes a different algorithm to solve, we'll not include those kind of constraints for now, okay? So for chapter three problems, you don't have to include the integer constraint. Uh, but uh, if you add the integer constraint uh, on paper, um, that, that, that's uh, fine, okay. If you don't have it, I won't deduct points for you. Okay, so that's our first uh, model. Um, and to make sure you, you write in this format. And the way defi we've already defined uh, the decision variables, so the x1, x2, and uh, that's our objective function, so that's uh, I write that like this. Objective function. Okay, so this is our objective function, and uh, these are our constraints. Okay, and uh, so this is a complete, and we need to define x1 is yes, number 2 produce for a equals bus and uh, x2 are number to produce for hydroluxis hot tops. Okay, so this would be a complete uh, OR model. Now, let's think about how to solve it. We actually already talked about um, how to solve this problem at the beginning um, by assuming that uh, things uh, equal um, equal sparse makes uh, more money um, each unit. Um, let's just assume that uh, we'll just make as many as possible. So we go through all this and we already figured out, okay, um, the maximum we can make is uh, x1 let's angle to 175 or 74 using the, the second constraint because the second constraint is the, the one that's uh, preventing um, the number of x1 to go. Okay, and uh, if, that's the, it's if that's the decision, if we're going just to make uh, equal spots and uh, no hydroluxis, then x1 equals to be, should be 174 and uh, x2 will be zero. Then our objective function, which is the total profit, would be calculated this way. But um, we will see that uh, this is not. Let's see. This is uh, not the optimal solution. Um, this is a feasible solution. So here I'm introducing this new concept, feasible. This is a feasible solution. Why? Because all the constraints are satisfied. Okay, so when all the when a solution satisfies all the constraints, that solution is uh, feasible. However, whether it's not optimal or not depends on whether we can find a solution that's better than this. And in this case, we can. 
we can find a solution that yields a better objective function value, which gives more profit. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, it's not optimal solution. Then how do we solve it? Um, the constraint of all the LP problems uh, defines the feasible region. What does that mean? Um, if uh, any solution is uh, satisfying all the constraint, that uh, means uh, that the solution is uh, feasible. Then the collection of uh, all the feasible solutions define the feasible region. Does that make sense? Okay. So all the feasible solutions are within the feasible region. Okay. And uh, the best point in this feasible region will give the optimal solution to this problem. And uh, when we solve uh, an OR problem, we're trying to find that point, or sometimes it's points um, that give the optimal solution, which either maximize the objective function or minimize the objective function. For any LP problems with two decision variables, it's easy to plot that feasible region and uh, find the optimal solution. And we do that uh, um, this way, okay, here. So that's uh, here is our model, okay, the one we just uh, uh, formulated, and with that knowledge that uh, the constraints. So so these are the constraints. We we'll define a feasible region where we just try to find a point in this region that gives our objective function value, the best value. Um, that's a point. That's a plot. This x one and x two on the co coordinate system, okay. So I have uh, I have x1 on the horizontal line and uh, x2 on the vertical line. Okay, and I'm trying to plot plot all of those constraints. Um, here, x1 and x2 are both greater than equal to zero. So that uh, means we are thinking about just this area. Okay, and uh, let me go back. Uh, Oh, it's okay. And then let's look at the first constraint. First constraint is uh, x1 plus x2 less than equal to 200. Can you, can you plot x1 plus x2 equal to 200 on this coordinate system? Can you plot that? How do you do that? You set x1 to be 0, find x2 value. Then that gives you one point, right? So when x1 equals to be 0, x2 need to be 200. So 0 and the 200 is one point. Then, when then you set x2 equal to be 0. And uh, let x1 calculate x1. So that's 200. That gives you another point. That's 200 and 0, right? OK, and then you connect both and get a ruler. Okay, so this is the line of uh, x1 plus x2 equals to be 200 on this coordinate system. Okay, then what about x1 plus x2 less than equal to 200? It's the area under this r line here, right? If it's uh, greater than equal to, then would it be on this side? Okay, it's less than equal to, so it's the this area under this area. Okay, so that gives us the first the the the, the boundary calculated. Um, let's see, the boundary drawn using the first constraint. Okay, and then we'll look at the second constraint. We're going to use the same way. So set x1 to be 0 and then calculate x2. Is that the 174? Um, we just calculated when we try to. 174, right? 174. Okay. And then when we set x2 to be 0, x2 to be 0, then x1 will be. 1, 5, 6, 6, divided by 9. How much is that? 
Oh, yeah, so this one should be x1, x2, this is x1. Yeah, okay. So this one should be, no, this one is correct, right? Also, it should be divided by 6. Yeah. Okay, divided by 6, so that's a 261. Okay, and so to then that that's give us another oh here this is one and this is two so this gives us another set of points so would it be 174 and 0 and uh, 0 261 so with these two points we can plot the second constraint okay so x is 0 um 261. It's somewhere somewhere here, right? It's 0, 261. And uh, when x2 is 0, it's 174. Somewhere here. 174, 0. Then we connect this two line here. No. That gives us the second constraint. And we know that uh, the area below this would be this area. Okay, then with these two constraints, the feasible region should satisfy both constraints. Okay, so with the two constraints, the feasible region now is from here to here. So it's actually this area here. Okay, any question? No? Okay, so that give us the second, uh, um, the, the, the feasible region defined by first and the second constraint. Okay, and uh, in the same way, we can plot the third constraint. <coughs> no, I'm not going to do it here. Okay, so plot the third constraint, and uh, our feasible region becomes uh, like this from here to here to here. Okay, and this shaded area is called the feasible region. Okay, and uh, again, that means all the points here, all the points in this region gives us a feasible solution um, that satisfy, satisfies all the constraints here. Okay, and the next, what we need to do is to find out which of those points gives us a maximized objective function value. Okay, and this part is a little tricky. Um, let's think in this way. Okay, let's say our objective function is to maximize a <coughs> z value. Okay, and this z equals to be 350 x1 plus 300x2. I want to find the point of x1 and x2 that maximize this z value. Um, but uh, on my coordinate system, this, is co this system only includes x1 and x2. And x2 is on the vertical, um, vertical um, coordinate. Okay, so what I want to do is uh, move this x2, um, actually, yeah, move, move this x1 to the other hand. So it's 300 x2 equals to be z minus 350 x1. And my x2 equals to be z divided by 300 minus 350 divided by 300 times x1. Why I'm doing this is because x2 is on the vertical side, okay? And uh, what I'm trying to do is say, okay, what the x2, one and x2 value will give me a maximized z value. And when this part is maximized, z value is maximized. 
then based on your knowledge from that algebra, what's this part on this coordinate system? If we draw lines, so th this coordinate system is include x1 and x2. If we draw lines with x1 and x2 using this function, what, what does this part uh, um, relate to? Or if we want to draw a line, what's this part? We want to draw a line using this function here. Slope, Good. Okay. So that's negative 7 over 6. That's the slope of the line, right? Okay. Then what about this part? Intersect. Intersect. Good. Okay. And uh, we know the slope of this, uh, this object function. But uh, the part that we don't know is the intercept. What we do know is that uh, we want the maximized z value. So as long as this entire part, which is the intercept, is ma maximized, our z value is maximized. Think about that again. Okay. So from this entire function here, I can draw a lot of different lines using the slope of negative 7 over 6. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay, so something like this. Okay, so that's one line with the slope of negative 7 over 6. That's another line, another line, another line. These all represent uh, this function because uh, it has a set slope. But the intercept, uh, we don't know. What we want is uh, the intercept is the maximized. So if we move, move, move this level curve, this, this, uh, this curve, all the way here, all the way to this direction, we are, maximi we, we are improving this uh, intercept value. OK, so these are the intercept. These are all the z divided by 300. These are all the intercept. Okay, so we can keep moving this uh, line all the way to this direct in this direction to improve my z value. However, we rem remember that uh, the x1 and x2 need to stay in this uh, feasible region so that it's a feasible it's a feasible solution at the same time it maximizes the z value here. Okay. So <coughs> Plotting the first, uh, um, as we said, the slope is uh, negative seven, six. Okay, so we can we can plot one slope, uh, one level curve here. The two points are this, and uh, we can get the objective function, uh, which is the three, uh, thirty-five thousand. Then we can move this level curve. Okay, and we can keep moving. Okay, get another objective function. And keep moving, get another objective function. And when we hit to this point, we get the maximized. Maximized z divided by 300 value. Okay, and uh, can we keep moving to here? No, when we move just one little little bit of move will move out uh, our solution, will move our solution out of this feasible region. Okay, so that's no longer a feasible solution. Okay, so this point is a feasible solution, and at the same time, it gives us the maximized intercept. Okay, and uh, because our objective function is to maxi maximize the z value, so at this point, we find our optimal solution. That gives us the maximized z value. Okay, and the, the oops, and the optimal solution. Oh, we'll, 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 tell, we'll talk about how to um, calculate this uh, now later. So this is our optimal solution, which at this point, and uh, we'll figure out what 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 this point. This point is uh, where this line here and uh, this line here intersect. Okay, and remember what are these two lines? 
these two lines are defined by two of the constraints, right? Okay, and uh, to find out this point, we just need to use those two constraints. And see, let's go back. To okay, here. Here, what we identified was here, this point. And uh, it was defined by this blue line, which is uh, this constraint, and uh, this red line, which is the first constraint. Okay, so which means uh, these two are the bounding constraints. They define the where the optimal solution is. Okay, and uh, this uh, this black line here is not the bounding constraint because uh, it did not, not play a role in defining its optimal solution. Okay, and then we need to use this x1 plus x2 equals to be 200, that's one line, and the 9x1 plus 6x2 equals to be 1566. Use these two functions to solve for this point, the x1 and the x2 value. Okay, these are pretty simple math. Okay, so calculating this optimal solution here. Um, the optimal solution occurs where the pump and the labor constraint intersect. And uh, these are the two functions we just, uh, um, um, calcul uh, just wrote. And uh, we'll just solve those by solving those equations. And we found out that, okay, solution is x1 equals to 122, x2 equals to be 78. And uh, the total profit, so once we find the x1 value and the x2 value, we'll just uh, replace them in the objective function. Then calculate the total profit, which is 66,100. Okay, so our optimal solution. So make sure that uh, whenever you answer a question, optimal solution is uh, what the decision variables uh, values are. Okay, and also talk about what the optimal objective function value is this uh, total profit here. Any questions? Oh, okay. <coughs> then a different way, just now uh, we talk about uh, one way to find out the optimal solution graphically, uh, which is uh, using the level curves. Okay. Um, mm -hmm, go back to again. So those, uh, those uh, lines that we draw using the object function's slope are called level here, level curve, because uh, they are all parallel. Okay, once we identify the slope of the objective function on our coordinate system, okay, then we can draw one line based on that slope, and we can keep just moving, keep moving this line until it touches the edge of our feasible region. And the by that time we know, okay, we find our optimal solution, okay. And uh, so these uh, these curves that are associated with those objective function is called level curves. Mm. Okay, and another way to find out the objective function is uh, to enumerate the corner points. Um, we know this is because uh, the optimal solutions always occur on a corner point of the feasible regions. Okay, so regardless of whether it's a maximization problem or minimization problem, the optimal solution always occur on those corner points. Think about it, whether it makes sense. A point inside will always yield a not better, a worse um, objective function value. Okay, say for example, if it's optimization, if it's a maximization problem, a point here will always yield a less optimal solution than a point that's, uh, that's on this direction, right? And if it's a minimization problem, that means we want the intercept to be as small as possible. If it's a minimization problem, then a, a point inside this feasible region will always be less optimal than a point on the edge of 
in this direction. Okay, so because of that, uh, the other way to find out the optimal solution is to enumerate uh, all those corner points and uh, calculate uh, what the objective function is. And then we compare. Okay, so 0, 54, 64, 66, 60. So this is the optimal solution because it has the highest objective function value. Okay, um, but this technique will not work if the solution is unbounded, um, which means uh, there will be a part that, uh, you um, that uh, it's not closed. So if the feasible region is not closed, then you won't be able to find out uh, the corner point of that. Okay, so usually we prefer to use uh, uh, the method using the level curve to find out the optimal solution. Uh, but one thing um, I want to make sure you know is that uh, when we use level curves, you want to make sure you draw the graph um, true to scale. Okay, because, uh, let me go back again. <coughs> oh, here. Um, this is a true to scale. Um, this is a true to scale um, feasible region, okay. Which means, okay, the, the spaces, the spaces are equal, okay. If the spaces are not equal, it's not a true to scale, then your graph may be something like this. Does that make sense? Okay, and uh, when you draw the slope of the level curve, it's still, let me see, um, so something like this, something like this. You may end up with uh, having this point being your optimal solution, which is not right. Okay, and uh, that's because the, the graph, uh, the scale is not right. Wh only when your scale of the graph is correct, you will be able to identify whether it's this point or this point, because uh, the slope of your level curve need to be compared with the slope of this line. Okay, so whether it's this point or this point. If your slope is like this, then it's this point. If your slope is something like this, Oh, it's still that one. Okay, if it's somewhere, let's see. Mm. Oh, so if your slope is something like this, if your slope is something like this, then it will become this point. Is that confusing? No. no? Okay. Okay. So, does that make sense? You have you really have to be true to scale because uh, the slope like how, how, how steep that uh, the level curve or even like the edges of your feasible region depends on whether, depends on those values you put on your graphic, okay? And if the slope is something like this because you didn't draw it true to scale, then the, the feasible, the, sorry, the optimal solution will change. Usually it's confusing whether it's this, it's hard to decide whether it's this point or this point. And then when that happens, uh, maybe try just enumerate both points calculate what objective function is to see whether it's this point or this point. Okay, so if say like uh, you, you, you are suspecting your graph is not uh, really accurate and uh, you're suspecting between two points, two adjacent points, then try to calculate the objective function, um, see which one is the best one. But if your graph is really true to scale, um, then you should be able to Identify it just uh, using the level curve slope. Okay, so that's uh, that's uh, um, graphical. So some summary of the graphical solution. Uh, plot the boundary of each constraint. Okay, plot them by changing the constraint from less than equal to equal um, greater than equal to to just the equation. Plot the line, and if uh, um, it's less than equal to, then you know it's the space under the the line. If it's greater than equal to, you know it's the space above it. Okay, and identify the feasible region. F feasible region would be the space uh, that's commonly shared by all the constraints. Okay, um, I usually, when I study, I usually use different colors um, to represent lines. So, so like when you do homework, you can do the same thing. You can use different colors to differentiate the constraint. So later when you're trying to identify uh, which point, uh, identify the x1, x2 value of your solution, you know which two constraints are intersecting with uh, at that optimal solution point, okay. And um, have you identified the feasible region, locate the optimal solution by either 
plotting the level curves, and the level curves is the slope is decided, uh, determined by the objective function. Okay, and uh, make sure that uh, say if your coordinate system is drawn in this way, then you want to get x two on one hand, and uh, so the z will be here. This would be um, let me see a two. This will be the coordinate. Uh, sorry, the coefficient of x two minus x1, a, a1, x1 divided by a2. So, so this uh, negative a1 divided by a2 is your slope. Okay, but if you draw your coordinate system the other way, x2 and x1, you can still do it. So what's your slope in this case? If you draw the coordinate system the other way. What's your what's your slope of the level curve? What's that louder? Minus. What's that? A two, one. Okay, yeah. So if you're doing this way, you need to me move x one, leave x one on one side and uh, move your x2. So this should be divided by x1's coefficient, right? Divided by a2 x2 divided by a1. So this is your coefficient. Okay, so either way works. Just make sure that when you draw your feasible region and your level curve, you use the right uh, slope. Okay, that's one. And the other way is enumerating the extreme points and uh, compare the object function value to get the best one. Okay, but this one does not always work. Does not always work. So this one is still the recommended. Okay. And uh, the bottom line is that uh, uh, you know now that the optimal solutions of any LP problems always occur on the corner point. Okay. Some specific situ special situations in LP models. Um, alternate alternative solution, redundant constraint, unbounded solutions, uh, infeasibility. And uh, well I'll illustrate this uh, in detail here. Feasible region is a line or just a point. Okay. For example, in the original model, we had a 350. Okay. But now, what if I change this uh, A1 value? to 450. So on this one, our slope of the level curve is what? So leave x2 on one side and move this to the other side. Negative 450 divided by 300, right? And what's that value? That one negative 4. That one point uh, ah. mine is not working. So one five. Negative one point five. Okay. And if you look at uh, those constraints and their slope, what's this slope? Negative one, right? What about this one? Third, which is the same as this one, right? And this one is negative 12 divided by 16. Yeah, negative uh, uh, 3 fourths. Okay. Then when we draw the level curve, it's something like this. Sorry, something like this. And and this uh, this constraint this is the constraint of nine uh, x one plus six x two is equal to one five six six. Okay, so now when we draw this level curve, it overlaps with uh, this uh, this entire line here. Okay, and uh, it happened to be all the points on this line give the same intercept, which is the maximized uh, intercept, 
which gives you the maximized objective function value. Okay, so what does that mean? All the points on this line are alternative solutions, are optimal solutions. Okay, so this is the, the special situation of alternative optimal solution. That's uh, <coughs> all the all the points on this line are alternative optimal solution. Um, the x1 and x2 value will be different, but they yield the same objective function value. Okay, another situation. Um, with in, in that original model, if we change the right-hand side of the first constraint, originally it was 200. Okay, now we change it to 225. That constraint moved to be here. Originally it was uh, here. Oh, sorry, it was it was here. Ah, sorry, <laughs> I got too many lines here. <laughs> Just can't draw straight. Okay, so anyway, originally it was somewhere here, but now we move the two here. And uh, this constraint now, this constraint now becomes a redundant constraint. Why we say it's redundant? Because it does not play a role in defining this feasible region anymore. Okay. You can see this feasible region is defined by this tubing constraint and this labor constraint. Okay, um, all the feasible uh, solutions are within this region, and they can never they can never um, go to here. So this uh, this uh, first constraint becomes uh, a redundant constraint. It no longer plays a role in defining the feasible region of our problem. Okay. So that's the definition of a redundant constraint. The next, uh, we said that the enumerating corner points, that method does not work if the problem is unbounded. Here is an example. Okay, so the constraint, there are two different constraints uh, plus the non-negativity constraint. And if I plot it, something like this. The first one is greater than equal to constraint, so you can see that's the first, uh, the line defined by the first constraint. And the since it's greater than or equal to, so it's the area on this side. Okay, then the second constraint is uh, this one, less than or equal to 400. So it, it's this row here, or uh, this line here. And it's less than or equal to, so it's uh, the area under it. Then the feasible region of this problem defined by both constraints is this uh, blue shaded area. And uh, you can see that area all goes all the way there. Because it's a maximize, maximization problem. So this part is pretty important, okay? Because it's a maximization problem, and the level curves are these ones. Um, yeah, you can see the level curves, uh, um, the, the, the slope is the same with this one, okay? So it's the same, so okay. So these are the level curves, level curves. And uh, because we're trying to f find the maximized uh, objective function value, we can keep going all the way to this direction without ever touching the uh, edge of this feasible region, right? So this problem is unbounded, which means uh, our objective function, objective function value is uh, um, positive um, infinity. Okay, so let me ask you, what if it's a minimization problem? What's the objective function? Uh, well, wh where's the solution? What's that? Think about it again. If I change this to be minimization problem. Which point? The intersection, this one? This one? What about this one? The same, right? So what's this special situation? Alternative solution, right? Does that make sense now? Remember, just now I said that this, the slope of the objective function value is the same as this slope, right? So if it's a minimization problem, then we, we want to go in this direction. So the level curve wants to go this direction until it uh, overlaps with this uh, constraint here. If we move, continue moving in this direction, it will be invisible, okay? But uh, now it overlaps with this constraint here. So all the points on this row, on this line here, are optimal solution. That gives us uh, the minimized intercept. So 
So if it's a minimization problem, this problem is uh, has alternative solutions on all on this line. Okay, but uh, if it's a maximization problem, it's unbounded because we want to move in this direction, and we can never touch the edge of the feasible region. So you can see, like when you determine whether problem, uh, what kind of a special situation is, you need to look at the both the constraint part or s and also the objective function part. Okay. Then another one. Example of infeasibility. So in this problem, there are two constraints. X1 plus X2 greater than or equal to 200, less than or equal to 200, oh, 150. Just by looking at these two constraints, we know that there is no solution, right? Because the, the both solution cannot be satisfied at the same time. So that's the example of infeasibility. Um, sometimes it's not that easy to identify just by looking at the constraint. We have to plot it and find, oh, one of the constraints that cannot be satisfied while the others be satisfied. And that's the infeasibility, okay? And um, another example, if uh, one of the constraints in the model is uh, equation instead of inequality, that means uh, to satisfy this constraint here, to satisfy this constraint here, it's not the area above or below, it's only points on this line here. Okay, so in this problem, the feasible region becomes this red line. Okay, because uh, to satisfy these two constraints, we it's, it's this blue area, and to satisfy the third constraint, we need, oh, sorry. Um, we need the points on this line, and only this part is uh, within this uh, feasible region defined by the other two constraints. So this entire line is the feasible region. Okay, and uh, if you need to find the optimal solution, then it has to be either this point or this point. Or if the objective function uh, slope is the same as this line, then, then it's the entire feasible line. Okay, so if we push this to extreme, in one situation, all the constraints are equations. Then the feasible region becomes this uh, point where all the lines intersect. Okay, this is kind of like a, it's, it's an equation then. Okay, then no matter what the objective function is, the feasible solution and the optimal solution is the same point. It's the same thing, okay? Because you don't have other choices, you have to do this. Um, then it's, it's the optimal and the feasible solution. Okay, so these are all the special situations that I want to talk about. Um, and, um, oops. <coughs> oh, I pushed the button, sorry. <laughs> okay. So these are all the all the special situation I want to talk about and uh, Microsoft PowerPoint dialogue Just ignore it. Okay. And uh, um so back to Oh, did I activate it or something? Okay. Okay. So um, when you go back, um, you are you already here. So um, do this one. Introduce yourself. You already watched this video, so you can check it and uh, lecture video. If you have something that's confusing, especially like okay, um, from the feasible region, how do we come to that point of the level curve? Um, review that part again. Um, install the solver, and then. Um, skim through chapter one and two. Um, just quickly go through it and uh, test your knowledge. Um, it, it's already open, so you can just go there, do the multiple choices, okay? And uh, this week, I'm not giving any assignments uh, as you to do the model and uh, um, graphically solve the problem. Next week, I'll give you another um, quiz that's um, asking you to formulate a simple model um, um, and solve it graphically. Um, again, it's ungraded. But in the third week, I'll ask you to do a graded homework assignment that includes the uh, uh, knowledge you gained from today. Okay.
So I don't want you to go home and forget about it. And uh, when it's a week three, it's like, oh, how did we do that? OK, so keep, keep it fresh. OK, yeah, so that's what I covered, want to cover for today.